Welcome to the Django Project, DJ Blogger. This tutorial is part of a YouTube Django Project playlist, which you can access in the video description. You can watch the whole course from the very beginning. If you enjoy this course and would like all the updated tutorials and associated code samples and more, you can check out this course and other courses this project features at Udemy. The link to the course is in the video description. In this tutorial, we're going to implement tags within our blog. So far, we haven't included a category, so we don't actually place any of our posts in a category. Therefore, in order for us to actually categorize any of our posts, we're going to add tags to our posts. So our post, when we generate a new post, we add a tag, maybe for example, a Django tag, and then any other posts related to Django, we also then include the Django tag within that post. We'll be able to search on those tags and produce pages whereby we show all the posts related to a certain tag. So it's quite flexible in how we can utilize tags within our application. Eventually, once we've set it up, you can see here from the demonstration, we're going to add some tags on our home page, which the user is able to then click on, and that will then take them to all the posts eventually, where they can then view all the posts related to, to that particular tag. So we won't actually build that feature in this tutorial. We'll do that later on in our project, but we get everything started so that we can start to add tags to our posts. And then in addition to that, we get all of our tags outputted here onto our homepage. So at the moment, we don't have anything here. So we're going to need to create that template here in our index page. So for this, there are a few different tools that we can utilize. So Django packages uh, for tags, let's type this in. That should take you to Django packages. You may not be familiar with this, but this is going to provide you um, some information regarding different packages that are available for Django, as well as give you some statistics to help you decide on which one to choose. You can see here that Django Tag It is probably one of the more popular tag applications or packages, sorry, that we can install and utilize. So we're going to utilize Django Tag It. So if I click on that, you can see that it does look like it's being updated, which is always a good thing. So let's type in Django Tag It and then PyPy, let's install it from the Python package index. Let's copy that. Let's go back into our application. Let's close down our server and clear that. And then pip install Django tag it. So once it's installed, let's just uh, check the documentation, see how we need to install this. So get started. So we install, uh, it doesn't look like, oh, we do. So we need to add tag it to our project installed apps. So here in our project, DJ Blogger, inside of here we have the settings and then we put it into the base. So let's move up to the installed apps. And there we go. So we are also provided instructions on how to integrate this now within our model. Now we have already implemented, let me just clear that. We have already implemented or migrated our database. So what we're going to need to do here then is first of all, just delete our database. Remember in the previous tutorials, we created a script, a factory, so we could add as many posts as we want really quickly. So we're just going to remove our database and then just make sure in our blog, in our migrations, that we also remove the migration file. So now we're ready to go into our models inside of blog. And let's go ahead and add a new field now for our tag. First up, we are going to need to add tag it or the taggable manager, import the resource in. So from uh, tag it dot managers, let's go ahead and import taggable manager. I think that's right taggable manager. Okay, so that's the import. And then we go down here at the bottom here. Let's go ahead and just add in a new field. Let's call it tag. Seems like it or tags could be plural tags equals and then the taggable manager. Okay, so that's how to implement the field. So now we need to be able to add some data into our table. 
In the previous tutorial, we created our factory file here, and this allowed us to generate data for our database or for our single table in this case. So we utilize lazy attributes here, this declarator, in order to create this function so that we could generate more paragraphs. So what we also want to do now, uh, underneath a status here, is we want to be able to generate tags whenever we create a new post utilizing our factory. Now, what we're going to need to do here, in actual fact, is use the factory post generation, because in order to create tags, we're going to need to create the tags after we saved the data, for example. So let's go ahead and utilize the factory um, post generation. So this is essentially going to happen after it's going to happen after we saved our post. We're going to need to then assign some tags to that particular post. So this is going to allow us to create a new function. We've got to call the function the same as the name of our field in our model, which is tags. And then just following the guide, we need to pass in here, create, potentially um, extract it, although we probably won't use those. We're just following the documentation and then our keyword arguments. Okay, so now then, if not create, and we return. So first of all, if we don't pass any tags into our tags, because they're not mandatory, we don't need to add tags to our post, then we just return. We don't need to do anything. Happy days. Else, what we need to do is we need to take the tags, so we need to extract them, and then we then need to, that's if we pass. So we can pass tags. This is going to allow us, the extracted here is going to allow us to actually pass our own tags whenever we generate a new post utilizing our factory here. So we can, for example, um, if we do pass any tags in, we can then go ahead and add those tags. So to add a tag, it's tags.add, and then we're going to extract, we, use all the tags that have been passed in, extract them, and then add them. Now, if we don't pass in any tags, let's just go ahead and just add some tags to our post. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a, a number of different tags. I'm going to just do this manually so that we have a number of tags. What we could do here, of course we could, we could utilize Faker to generate some tags, but I've just chosen this approach for now because I wanted some specific tags related to the context of my blog, which is a kind of tech blog. So I've added some tags. So this means unless I actually pass in tags, we're always going to create a post which is associated to all of these tags. Okay, so you might want something different. By all means, go ahead and do that. But that pretty, excuse me, that pretty much, um, finishes off the tags in our factory. So now we can go ahead and generate our tables, migrate our table, and then go ahead and utilize our factory to generate some data. So let's do exactly that. Let's go into our terminal here. Let's uh, python3 manage.py. Let's uh, make migrations. Looks like we've got a problem here. I swear, I think, I think it's, uh, Tag it dot manager. Um, so ta from tag it managers. So cannot import name taggable man. Yeah, I swear I typed this in wrong. Taggable manager. Yeah, it's just a spelling mistake. There we go. So taggable manager. I thought I made that when I initially created that import. So let's just try this again. There we go. So we've made our migration. So now we can go ahead and migrate. Now it looks like we've got a problem here. Let's take a quick look. Um, exception inconsistent migration history. Okay. So if you do receive this problem, and I can tell you that I've never, in the years I've been using Django, I've never seen this issue. Um, so let's just make sure that our initial migration has been deleted, right? So let's move that to a trash. That's in blog migrations. Okay. So I'll just go ahead and delete my database again. So just a case of starting from scratch again. Okay. 
So I'll clear that. Let's go ahead and make migrations. Okay, so that's number one, the initial migration. Let's go ahead now and migrate. Okay, so now we're okay. So maybe I accidentally didn't delete the file I was meant to initially. So we can see that everything now is okay. And we can start to now utilize our factory to generate some data. So let's do that by python 3 managepy shell. Let's go ahead and just grab what we need. So from djblogger.blog.factory, let's go ahead and import the post factory. And now let's use the post factory. So x um, equals post factory uh, dot create and then we're going to use create batch and then we're going to create let's just create a hundred posts again okay so that should have created our hundred posts we can inspect the database or simply just exit this and then run our server again and take a look at our web page. So you can see that we've generated another 100 posts. You can see we've got our infinite scroll option working. Right, so now we need to now extract the tags and now create a tag cloud here on the left right hand side here of our index page. Okay, so let's just tidy up, uh, close all that. Okay, we'll just close all that. So right, we're inside of our blogger, we're inside of our DJ blogger and then templates and we need the blog index. So on the right hand side here then where this B is, this is where we want to now add a tag cloud. So we want to extract all the tags from our database and put them in a nice little tag cloud on the right hand side. So first up then in our components, let's create a new component for this. So let's call this tag cloud, a reusable component, which we can then potentially utilize in the rest of our site. Now the problem is here, is if you're new to Py um, Django, this might not make sense. So I try to explain it as if you are new. Inside of our blog in views, this data here, we're collecting this model data and we're passing it back to our template. That's the only data that we're passing to our template. This is our template here. Now the problem is here that we need different data here. We need data regarding um, the tags that are stored in our database. So we're going to need to create another query and we then need to pass that to our template. So what we can do here is we can extend our, our class here and we could add some more context in order to create that query, which is going to query our, our database, look for all the tags that we have in our database and then extract them so that we can then output them onto our template. So that's one approach. However, this tag cloud that we're generating or building we're going to be utilizing it on multiple pages. So we don't want to replicate that code of getting that data in each of our views. Now, I don't think I've ever seen a tutorial where they showcase this feature. So let me just show this at register inclusion tag here. And this is quite a useful thing when you want to develop in this way. Now, this is just one approach uh, to this. And I really just wanted to showcase the register inclusion tag. So here what we can do is we can create and register a custom template tag, which in addition to returning data, we can also return a different template. So essentially, if you come from maybe, or if you're aware of maybe some of the JavaScript frameworks where everything's all about reusability, adding components and et cetera, essentially we're doing the same thing here. We're replicating that type of feature where we can get a template and also grab data and place it onto another template. So this is what we're going to be utilizing. So inside of our blog app, let's create a new folder. We're going to call that uh, template tags, template tags. And then inside of here, we're going to create a new template tag. So let's call this tag cloud dot pi. Okay, so we just need to go through the, the kind of, kind of, the, the process of registering our tag. So from Django, let's import 
uh, yeah, let's import template. And then from our tag it models, remember all the tags are stored in the tag it model. So when we installed uh, tag it, when we went ahead and migrated, we did actually build a new tag it model. We can see that. So here I have an extension called SQLite installed, which means I can go down into my database, wherever my database is. I can't find the database. There it is. And then open up a database, right click open up. I can then inspect my database if I refresh. I can have a look at the tables and you can see one of these tables is the tag it table. So I can show that table and you can see all the tags we currently have in our database table. So we do have tags ready to go. So let's clear that. So we want to get or access that table. Oh, capital T, our tag table. And we want to extract all of our tags out, of course. So let's go ahead and first of all, register equals template uh, dot library. So we're just going to register this new template tag so we can utilize it within our templates. And now we can go ahead and utilize the register dot inclusion tag. Inclusion tag. There it is. So now what we can do is we can specify a template. So that's in, I'll just drop this down. Our template is stored in blog components. Inside of there, we have the tag dash cloud dot HTML page. There we go. Uh, so that's my tag. Oh, sorry, that's my template that I'm going to be utilizing. And now I can create a nice function here. So I'm going to call this sidebar tag cloud. And then what I can do now, x equals tag dot objects dot all. So let's grab all my tags and then I can go ahead and just return those tags. So um, like you would a normal view tags, unless you haven't built a normal view before, we're just adding some context, returning that context to our template. So what we're saying here is that we've grabbed all the template tags, we're storming an X and then in our template, we can access those tags utilizing this keyword here tags. Right, and then obviously we can return that back to this template here, the tags cloud template. So this is our tags cloud template in the components. So what we need to do here, of course, is now create a, a small template and output our tags. So let's create a new outer div, if you like. Uh, let's give it some padding or margin, margin, bottom margin four. So it can then be buddied up with some other sidebar goodies. I don't know why I said goodies. Some other sidebar components. Uh, class equals, um, let's give it a border at the bottom. Okay. And then we have our tag cloud. So create a new A new section here and inside of here we simply just need to loop our tags so for tag in tags remember tags this is the name where we can access our tags so for our tags we're going to simply just output them so let's uh, output our tags um, we want to do that eventually we want to do that as a link so we can link it to another page but we'll do that in another section of this course for now let's just get them out so tags.name so just outputting the name of our tags if you're not too sure just inspect the table you remember we didn't build the tags table so you may not be aware of all the different fields and then we just need to end our for loop so n4 Okay, so that's the basics. We're starting in a minute. Let's just get this now inside of our index. So here we're simply going to include. 
So we simply need to include our, our tag cloud. So to do that, like we've done before, let's just go ahead and include and just describe what we want to include. So dot slash components. Inside of there, we have the tag. What's it called? Tag cloud? Tag cloud. Okay, so with that done, let's go back to our home page. Let's refresh and nothing is showing. So let's uh, just make this sure the server's on. Let's turn it off. Let's turn it back on again. And it's still not working. So let's start to debug. Right, so first of all, let's just make sure we've actually, we're actually uh, adding this template on. And we can check that. Let's just go ahead and just add some random text here. Right, so let's just check to make sure that this is, has actually been included. And you can see here straight away that it doesn't look like it is being included in. So it would, oh no, of course, let's get it outside of the loop, apologies. Let's add some text outside of the loop, refresh. There we go. So it does look like our template is working okay, which is all good. Um, so it looks like there's some problem now with our tags being outputted. So in actual fact, is it's not a problem. So this is how we've been working previously. We've been including files, but we don't want to include this because we're using a template tag. So we're going to access this in a completely different way. Now, remember also we're creating, we're using the inclusion tag, which is going to find and utilize the template that's been specified. So we don't need to specify a template either. So here in actual fact, we're not including. We're going to simply just call our new template tag because we've now registered it with Django. So sidebar tag cloud. So that correlates to our function name here, sidebar tag cloud. So now let's uh, utilize, for example, load. So we need to load our tag. So let's go in and try this. So now we use load. It says that the sidebar tag cloud is not registered tag library. So in actual fact, now our sidebar, it doesn't look like we've actually registered our tag. But what we are presented with is a list here. And inside of this list, you'll see tag cloud. Now that correlates to this file here called tag cloud. So in actual fact, if we go back now into our index and we then use tag cloud, which has been registered and go back and refresh, it looks like we have successfully now registered a tag, but you can see that the data still doesn't exist. Okay, so the first step is to load our tag. So our tag is, apologies, it's up here, isn't it? The tag cloud, that's the name, and also our tag, that's what's been registered. So within our template, first of all, we load the tag, and then we have access to our sidebar tag cloud. So let's go ahead now and see if we can output this. So that's our sidebar tag cloud. So now we've registered our tags. We then access our function here. So let's go back in and refresh. And you can see now on the left right hand side, you can now see that the template is working. The data hasn't seen doesn't seem to be working at this point, but we can see in actual fact the the template looks like it's working. We're outputting what's expected at this point minus the actual tags. So let's see if we can actually access this data here. So let's type in tags here just before the loop. And you can see that is how we're passing the data across to our template tags. So let's give this a go. Let's output this and you can see they've already refreshed and outputted that. So it does look like we are returning our tags from the database. You may have already spotted the typo and the reason why it isn't working is because here I'm referring to tags and not tag. Remember, we have a, a number of different items here which we're looping through. So we're grabbing that data and we're looping through that and we're passing that into tag in actual fact. So if I remove the S, let's get rid of the tags and that text there. Let's go ahead and refresh. And you can now see that we have access to all of our tags. Now we are going to be utilizing 
this for many of our pages. So we're going to add this tag cloud to many of our pages. So it can be a little bit of an inconvenience to have to load our tag cloud before we then actually able to use it. Now we could, for example, we could add this load cloud tag to our base. Remember, this is um, extending from the base. So let's go over to our base here. Let's add it up the top load our tag cloud there then hypothetically what's happening now is that when we load our page it's going to load the base it's going to load the tags so let's give that a go and see if that works and you can see here in actual fact it won't work in this way so instead of loading it in the actual template let's just make it available in a global sense so let's take it let's go back to our index here Let's, we have already in our index, we've removed the loading of the template tag. So now we're going to move over to DJ Blogger. We we'll go over to the settings. Uh, if we can find them, settings and then base. And inside of the base, if we move down, you can see there's a section here for templates. So what we can do here is we can set some kind of global context if you like so here we can set something that can be accessed it within all of our templates so let's go ahead and specify our tag cloud so underneath here the options let's go ahead and say built-ins and here what we can do is we can then specify um, DJ blogger dot blog uh, I think that's right tjblogger.blog, yep. And then inside of our template tags, dot tag cloud. Okay, so we can just simply register our tags in a global sense. So it would now be regist registered or loaded on each of our templates. And of course, as we're going to be utilizing this cloud tag cloud pretty much on every page, eventually that makes sense in this context. So Let's go ahead and just uh, run our server. Looks like everything is working and refresh. You can see now see we still have the tag cloud available. So let's now style our tag cloud. You can see that it's going to look a little bit like this on the bottom here. So let's go ahead and add some styling to our tag cloud. So first of all, we can see that there's some text at the top here of our tag cloud, which is relevant to our tags. So let's first of all, Let's go ahead and outside of our loop here, let's go ahead and add a, for example, H4. And let's uh, create some padding for this. So padding bottom, let's go for two. And then we want to make this font weight bold. Bold. And then we want to also change the font size. Now, Bootstrap doesn't provide us all the font sizes. So we're going to need to make our own font size here. So I want this to be font size 14. So I'm going to follow this pattern here of using FS like Bootstrap does for the font sizes, but I'm going to change it to the number 14. Let me, let's go back into our CSS. We need to find our CSS. That's going to be somewhere in static main and at the top here, um, let's get rid of test. That isn't anything, is it? Um, and also, our logo is okay. So let's go underneath here. Let's call this a font section. Let's go ahead and uh, say font size 14. I'm just going to specify font size 14. So font size. And you can do this in rem or pixels. It's up to you. So let's do this in rem, 0.8. 75 rem which is 14 pixels and there we go so let's go back to close that let's go back to our text here and let's uh, type something here um so it's going to be in capitals now we can write this in capitals or we can use a template tag which will then just automatically convert this into capitals more of what matters to you there we go so let's take a look and let's see so it's a little bit large it doesn't look like the font size is working correctly here fs 14 let's take a look at our main again so 
FS14. So for some reason it's not applying our font size necessarily. Um, let's take a look at why that might be. So we inspect this. Let's take a look. So in our console here, or elements, sorry. It looks like it's been applied by Bootstrap. Um, it doesn't look like our CSS is being picked up. So that might be, might need to do a refresh. Nope. So another way of debugging is to check to see if the code has actually been applied on this page. So although we've just hard refreshed the page, uh, we can right click in an empty space here on Chrome, this is on a Mac, and we can view the page source. So that gives us access to the actual HTML. So we can use a, a search here, uh, discover, and you can see that our CSS class has been applied here, but you probably already noticed that the word class is incorrectly spelt here. And that helps us identify the, what the problem is here. So let's go back and change that to class. We can now refresh and it looks like we've got what we want to achieve. So let's now focus in on actually applying a style to the actual tag names. So many ways to do this. Now this is gonna be, uh, outside of our a tags in our span. So let's go ahead and add a class here. Um, let's go for a border. So we're gonna have a border dark. Let's apply it bar, uh, dark. So let's um, actually add a border. So we need to define the border. And then we're gonna have a dark border, black border, and then we're gonna have a padding of one in general. We have some padding on the left and the right. Let's set that to three and then have a margin at the bottom, so the spaces when there's different rows. And let's go for two, and then we'll put a margin at the end of one. <laughs> okay, and then we'll define rounded pill. Give that a go, see what that looks like. There we go, so it's starting to line up as we want it to look. So we're going to set the size of the font to 15. So let's just go through this again, font size. Let's change the font size. Let's add our own font size, so 15. So I'm just thinking 15 in rem. That is going to be 0.9 something. Um, so 15 is uh, 0.9375. Okay, so font size 15, let's remove that. It's back in here, in our A tag here, let's go for class equals. Uh, let's now change it to font size 15. Okay, and there's still a little bit of issues, is there not, with the borders, etc. So let's um, let's uh, change the font weight to 500. Now we already have that in our. I think we we've already, we've already set that. I think in our CSS. Yep, from weight 500, so we have that already. So let's give that a go. And you can see now it's changed to the default kind of a link color. So let's uh, set the text, uh, text declaration to none to get rid of the underscore and let's set the text to dark or body, whatever you like. So let's have a look at that. Refresh. Mm, that's not worked because I put it in the wrong place. Apologies. Down here in the A-linked A tag. Okay. All right. So it's just the padding that we have a problem with now. If you weren't too sure why the padding wasn't working, it's because we're using a span. And a span is an inline container. Whereas a div, for example, is an inline block or a block level element. So in short, we can't apply margins directly to a span. But what we can do is we can convert it. So at the end here, let's just add a style manually. And this is again, just to show you the fact that we can add styles directly here within our tags. So let's add style, uh, style equals and Let's go ahead and add display and then inline. 
Okay, so once we've applied that, we are then able to actually apply our margin at the bottom. Okay, so by all means, take a look at web pages such as W3Schools if you want a basic overview of some of the HTML tags or learn a little bit about HTML if that is something that you need to do. So let's go back to our page. Let's refresh. Hard refresh. Doesn't look like it's worked so far. Let's take a look. That's because I haven't finished the inline. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, inline uh, block. Apologies. Right. Okay. Let's go back. Let's refresh. And there we go. So let's put some final touches on this. So we, we were expecting to have some sort of line here at the bottom a border. So let's see if we can apply that. I think we did add a bottom border here in this class. Um, but maybe we need to just change that. And here also we had a border dark as well um, in our span here, which is a little bit confusing. So let's go ahead and just uh, wrap this up by finishing off this border at the bottom. So this border here, obviously in our span, that correlates to our border around our tags. And then this border here was meant to be the border at the bottom. Now you can see here the reason why it's probably not working because it just says bottom, bottom for some reason. So let's change that to border bottom. Let's go back to our own version. You can now see we have a nice little border here. Um, notice the default color is this gray. So I haven't had to specify the color. That's just the default. It looks like we're going to need a little bit of padding there at the bottom. Uh, so let's uh, put it inside of here. Gosh, of course. So I'm putting it here because this is inside the border. If I put it up here, then I would probably need to use margin, but I want to use a bit of padding. So if I put it inside, then the padding will stretch and then stretch this border. So padding bottom, let's give it a two, uh, maybe four. So now when we refresh, we now have a nice padding there. And there we have it, a tag cloud. So let's just summarize what we've done here. So we have built this tag cloud by first of all, building a template tag and registering that tag so that we can then go ahead and run an additional database query, which is to collect all the tags from the database. We return that there to a template, which we can then specify. So this is a component in itself with its own data. We can then utilize this throughout the rest of our application. And of course, we've registered this to be available in the settings. If we go into our settings and then base, we utilized the uh, built-ins here to register this and make this available site-wide so that we can utilize this component on any page. The approach here in this tutorial, like the previous tutorial, was try not to give you too much information, but by making mistakes, it draws us to different areas of importance to hopefully give us a, a deeper understanding now, it might not be the easiest to watch this type of learning and teaching, um, but hopefully it's got you thinking, it's got you a little bit more alert in terms of trying to follow along. And although you may have, when you followed along, you didn't fall into the same trap of having those spelling errors, uh, syntactic errors, um, hopefully you did, uh, so that you can experience some of those errors. Because ultimately, like I said before, it's okay following on a tutorial and everything is okay. But once you make a small mistake and you have a problem, you're then left in a position where you don't have any prior knowledge. So you aren't able to fix it and you spend the next four hours trying to fix something, which is really quite simple to fix like, a, like you've seen here in this tutorial. It was a simple case of just finding the spelling error, for example. So hopefully that was maybe useful. If it wasn't, I do apologize. Next tutorial, let's go ahead and now add a new footer for our index page.